Good evening and welcome to State of Business on Art Television. I'm Tamiru Nimsar. Let's have a look at the headlines. Government plans to expedite counter drug trafficking measures. Aswasuma benefits will be deposited before December. Official says. News in detail. The chief of the presidential staff, Sagal Ratnayaka, announced the forthcoming establishment of an anti-narcotic command to combat the influx of drugs into Sri Lanka. He conveyed this while inspecting the seizure of 200 kilograms of heroin valued at 4 billion rupees yesterday. <laughs> command <laughs> සකසන විශේෂ බලතල ඇතිව ඒ වගේම විශේෂ බුද්ධි සේවාවක් ඒ වගේම වැටලීම් කරන්න අවශ්‍ය ඒ සම්බන්ධීකරණය හමුදාවල් අතර කරන්න බලතල ඇතිව ඊටම වැඩි දිනක් නැතුව ඒ පනති වැඩි කටයුතු අවසන් වෙලා පාර්ලිමේන්තුවට ඒක දෙන්න බලාපොරොත්තු වෙනවා ඒ කමාන්ඩ් එක ඇන්ටි නාකොටික්ස් කමාන්ඩ් කියන එක ස්ථාපිත කරන්න බලාපොරොත්තු වෙනවා අපි රජයක් වශයෙන් කැප වෙලා ඉන්නවා the welfare benefits board urged the beneficiaries whose names have been listed but are yet to open bank accounts to do so without delay in order to receive their entitled benefits. The Presidential Media Division said that the request was made during a meeting at the President's office recently. The PMD reported that the meeting involved the Welfare Benefit Board and other relevant parties including the State Minister of Finance, Shehan Semasinghe. Chairman of the Welfare Benefits Board, Jayanta Vijayaratna, had disclosed that over 7 billion have been disbursed to over 1.2 million families as of October 16th. It was also revealed that there have been delays in providing payments to a group of beneficiaries due to various issues. The President's Media reported that State Minister Shehan Sema Singha emphasized the need to expedite the disbursement of benefits. It was revealed that approximately 200,000 people have faced delays in receiving the payments due to the absence of bank accounts. The chairman of the Welfare Benefit Board had said that once the accounts are opened, the associated payments can be promptly deposited. The importance of maintaining a robust unit within the Divisional Secretary's offices for the execution of the relief program was emphasized at the meeting. It was also suggested to declare a special work week to facilitate the completion of benefit payments by the end of December. In a significant move towards economic advancement, Sri Lanka has initiated the process of revitalizing its existing export strategic plan called the National Export Strategy 2018-2022. to The endeavor has obtained technical support from the International Trade Center based in Geneva. Senior Officer, Trade Strategy and Competitiveness of ITC, Charles Roberge visited Sri Lanka from October 16th to October 18th on this purpose. The endeavour is spearheaded by the Sri Lanka Export Development Board in collaboration with the Ministry of Investment Promotion. During the visit, the ITC expert had the opportunity to meet the representatives of associations, chambers, advisory committees and policymakers of the government. The foundation for the existing national export strategy was laid in 2017 when six pivotal sectors were identified for development. The identified sectors were information technology, processed food and beverages, electrical and electronic products, board building, wellness tourism, spices and concentrates. Building on this legacy, the current initiative focuses on revitalizing the existing national export strategy to align it with the contemporary market challenges. It further aims to harness emerging opportunities while fast-tracking game-changer activities to revitalize the development process of the country as a trade and investment hub. The EDB said that it will be the roadmap for export growth 
and thus it must be executed with the fullest commitment of all implementing agencies. Stay tuned, we will return after this short commercial break. Welcome back after the break. The Wildlife International Conference 2023, organized by the Department of Wildlife under the theme of Ecosystem Management for Conservation, was held in Colombo recently. Officials assure that those findings via the research papers presented at the conference will be more useful in the subject area. The Wildlife International Conference was held for two days and a large number of issues were discussed including the wildlife zones in the humid zone ecosystems co-ecosystems and dry zone ecosystems in this country. Subject areas were also included coral systems and marine biodiversity, the species of animals and plants in this country, the eco-friendly tourism industry, the conflict between wild elephants and elephants. The subject minister also appreciated the fact that 10 out of 54 research papers have been submitted by the officers working in the wildlife department. Addressing the gathering, Mr. Van Niyarachi also said that the government is privileged to witness cutting-edge research and innovative approaches to wildlife conservation and those findings and ideas will help to shape the future of all wildlife conservation efforts. She also added that with the collective efforts of the scientific community, policymakers and conservationists, the department could make a significant difference in the wildlife arena. These findings and ideas are instrumental in shaping the future of our wildlife protection efforts. The 57 presenters and their contributions demonstrate the wealth of knowledge and passion that we can draw upon as we face the complex challenges of the 21st century. I would like to extend my deepest appreciation to the Director General of Wildlife Conservation Department and other officials, the organizers, volunteers, and everyone who has played a part in making this symposium a resounding success. Your hard work and dedication have not gone unnoticed. And we are all in your name. As we conclude this event, I urge all of us to carry the spirit of collaboration, innovation and passion back to our respective roles. The Cabinet of Ministers has approved to seek project proposals for the design and building of an innovative 150 to 200 megawatt solar power plant in the Samuel of Every Sawyer. Officials from the Ceylon Electricity Board assured that the Summerall of Every Sawyer has been identified as the optimal location for the construction of a floating solar photovoltaic power plant. The Government Information Department, disseminating the weekly cabinet decisions, said that it has been determined that there is considerable untapped potential to implement solar power generation projects on the surface of reservoirs. They said that those reservoirs will be then managed by the Ceylon Electricity Board and the Sri Lanka Mahaveli Authority. Government Information Department also noted that the proposed plant is slated to have an impressive capacity of approximately 150 to 200 megawatts, marking a substantial leap towards cleaner and more sustainable energy sources. The move is in association with the National Procurement Guidelines governing infrastructure facility projects. Recognizing the pressing need for sustainable energy solutions, it has been acknowledged that generating solar electricity on the surface of reservoirs through the construction of floating solar power plants represents a fitting solution for countries with limited land availability. The initiative aligns with Sri Lanka's broad efforts to transition towards renewable energy, reducing dependency on traditional fossil fuels. Emerald, Sri Lanka's leading menswear brand, dazzled fashion enthusiasts with their latest AW23 showcase, Evolux, a grand fashion spectacle that redefined the essence of luxury and style. As a testament to Emerald's commitment to pushing the boundaries of fashion innovation, the fashion event was held in Colombo recently. 
The event explored the idea that true luxury today encompasses not only extravagance but also ethical considerations, innovation and uniqueness. From traditional opulence to contemporary minimalism, Evolux celebrated the dynamic journey of luxury in the modern world. The fashion show consisted of 10 stunning segments, each meticulously designed to cater to the diverse tastes of Emerald's clientele. Among the highlights was the Fun in the Sun collection, a vibrant blend of colors and unrivaled comfort that caters to the young and adventurous. Crafted from 100% cotton, this collection features t-shirts and polos, ensuring that young boys can embark on their outdoor adventures in style. The fashion show also unveiled T-Style Sensation, a premium collection for those seeking the perfect fusion of comfort and urban sophistication. The fashion show primarily targeted dealers, offering them a first look at the upcoming seasonal collection and the opportunity to make bookings for the season ahead. Emerald also extended invitations to key figures and celebrities in the fashion industry who graced the event with their presence. Emerald sets new benchmarks in men's fashion, blending tradition with innovation and sustainability cementing its place as Sri Lanka's leading menswear brand. That's all our news for today. For this and more, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. Take care.